Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a very odd video for me. So first and foremost, if you've noticed my voice, it's been a bad allergy season. I'm still kind of getting over it. So apart from that, uh, I wanted to bring up something that I actually was not expecting. When I logged into Steam on Monday or Tuesday this week, I was greeted by a very unusual notification that actually left me quite surprised. On the homepage here at Steam, it is the Steam Racing Fest. So from Monday, May 23rd to Memorial Day, which would be Monday, May 30th, uh, there are some significant sales on racing games. So again, I've never seen anything quite like this before, and it makes me super excited because in my mind, in 2022, racing as a genre of video games feels like it's never been smaller, I guess. And I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised to say that I'm actually incorrect uh, in that in 2022, it, it's still going strong, I suppose, because Steam, you know, has got this big banner, you know, uh, kind of letting everybody know, you know, here's all sorts of different types of games you can get. Um, you know, it's reminding us of some huge games from the past couple of years, Forza Horizon 4, Set of Quartz, Need for Speed Heat. Uh, BMNG, you know, Hot Wheels Unleashed, Crew 2, Wreckfest, and uh, iRacing, obviously, and Dirt Rally 2. And it's just, it's just nice to feel appreciated once again, I suppose. Kind of an odd thing to say. But for this uh, coming weekend, you know, this, you know, today on Friday and then Saturday and Sunday, uh, some other very interesting things are coming out of this. Like, for example, Circuit Superstars. I can't say enough good things about that game it's actually free during this weekend so right now if you don't already own it please download it please give it a try it's a great game and i believe it's even 25 percent off uh circuit super service yep i'm correct 25 percent off so 15 bucks great price for this game so with that being said, that then brings me to the topic of this video. The reason why you most likely clicked on this video is because of this game. Uh, the game is called Race League, and it is a very cool game that I've been following on uh, TikTok for a long time. I've been very interested to see about how it actually, you know, plays out, how it is, you know, how it works. And it's, it looks like it's got great graphics, it's got a track editor, uh, and it's developed by a singular person uh, who is the, uh, only goes by the name of Oversteer Studios. But with that being said, this game looks like it was a combination of uh, sim racing, arcade racing, and a little bit of Wreckfest as well. So it just seems like it was a, it's a collage of great ideas, and I just wanted to see how it worked out and fortunately for this week it is a free demo so i definitely uh, give it a quick try today to see uh, what my opinions are of this game so race league uh let us go into unfortunately no practice uh, no uh, multiplayer in this so of course we'll go to um start out in the garage and select our car we'll do yeah we'll start with the rally car and go for nice blue and under the practice menu you'll see a couple of things here so again the game is very much so focused on the track editor so you can create your own tracks you can create uh you know anything that you want really and of course they do have like a default track list as well about a couple of uh, tracks that you can play uh, that were created by the creator itself. So this is going to feel a lot like uh, Cheap Weekly Thrills. For those who are familiar, I used to host a series on a different channel on a previous channel before this one, where I find games on a weekly basis uh, by you know indie developers, you know individual independent creators um, that were very cheap, uh, listed every week on Steam. So kind of as a, this episode is almost like a spiritual successor to that. So let's start out with, you know, this track here. Um, first and foremost, initial impressions here is that um, sound design was a little bit odd. Graphics were, um, I think TikTok makes it look a little bit more professional, a little bit more pretty, I guess, but it's not bad. Uh, for 2022, uh, yeah, 
could be a little bit better. I mean, we've got, you know, Unreal 5 that was just released uh, that creators can actually start using here. Um, but to ask an independent developer to remake an entire game in a brand new engine is probably a little bit too, uh, a little bit too, uh, mean, I guess. But as you can tell here, uh, the driving I'm struggling quite a bit with. Uh, the car is, like, very, uh, oversteer happy. You know, the rear end has a mind of its own. It's very twitchy, very, uh, unstable, very unnerving, not sure of itself. Um, and I'll get to that in a moment. So, it's... First impressions were not... Yeah, as you can tell, just absolutely snapping right back. First impressions were not... Uh, great. Until... The settings menu came in. So, of course, you've got graphics, low, medium, and high. For a cheaper game, that is awesome to see. Uh, Gameplay-wise, um... I mean, it's... Mostly there as well. I mean, changing between automatic gearbox, you know, having ABS, you know, traction control. Uh, this here was what was the issue that I found out is that as soon as you turn this down to about here, it changed the handling hugely. We'll reset our car and we'll start again. So the racing line I didn't see before actually uh, goes through the car. That's a little bit odd. Um, but it's, again, nice to see, like, recommended braking points. Um, the car suddenly handles hugely different, where you actually feel like you're in control. The car doesn't feel um, completely unpredictable, unstable. Uh, that there was just completely driver error. I'll, I'll own up to that. That's that's my own problem And because of this here I actually should the racing line actually does seem to be pretty um, <laughs> The racing line seems pretty uh, accurate, which is nice to see versus you know Forza Horizon 5 where it's just like here break in the middle of a straightaway why so I'll reset the car here, we'll try once again, but the really nice thing that I found out about this game was that, um... So originally my first impressions were not great, but then I found myself really starting to get a hang of, like, the, the vehicle. I think I was driving, uh, the Porsche GT3 kind of knockoff looking car. Um, and I really got it into a groove where it was, I was just sitting here, um, just putting in the laps, you know, just absolutely focused on the race, the racing line, you know, the, the apexes, the breaking points, you know, where I was in relation to the, uh, uh, to the person who was setting the fastest laps and whatnot. And already, I don't feel like I should be going this, like, my driving is not that great, but the fact that I'm apparently two seconds down from fastest person means that nobody's really done this car combination of this track yet. Don't invalidate the lap. Please don't. Please don't. Nice. So I was about to make mention about uh, this track being kind of an odd layout because you've got the start finish straight away and then you go straight into a braking zone, and it's just not a great, um, <laughs> not a great track design, but fortunately this was not something that was designed by the creator themselves, so nice. That's, that's something that can be fixed. So we'll go to the garage, uh, we'll go into our, again, the Porsche GT3 kind of knockoff. Again, go for a nice blue color, select that, uh, go to practice. And let's try something different. We'll do the Arbil Circuit Park. Change the time of day to 1631, so 431 in the afternoon. Um, let's try two AI cars. Well, I guess I'm rolling back into uh, Steven there. <laughs> so yeah, there's a couple of things that I've noticed. First of all, the game is obviously in work in progress. 
thus says down at the bottom. Uh, the biggest notes here is the audio, to be quite honest. The, the cars all have like a deep rumble, which I guess is like a stylistic choice that all cars have like a lower, like not like Ferrari 458 Italia, like just screaming V12 engine or whatever. Um, But it also seems like that there's like some weird audio clipping where they're where they're not transitioning very well. Like for example, like they're like uh, I don't know if there would be whenever you take damage or if it's like a tire screechy, screeching effect or something when you go for curbs. But it's just like kind of like cracks. And the thing that I found before is. This isn't really the case in this car, but it seems like if you took a minute amount of damage, like, the handling would be heavily impacted to the point where it was not even, like, you couldn't even control the car, really. And I feel like I'm getting to that point now where I can't even really turn right. So we're going to reset car. As again, there's no restart track or restart lap. So restart car or reset car. And please note, when you reset the car, you're immediately dropped into the race. And if you saw here on the right side, I'll pull it back up again. Every time you reset, it like doubles or triples the the leaderboard. So again, some some bugs that are needing to be worked out, yes. Oh, and yeah, having a collision with the, the opponent's there is just... Not a great sound. So I can tell you one thing. The the damage physics appears to be the thing that was spent the most amount of time on. Uh, the, the handling itself, I mean, I can imagine that a lot of time was spent on that as well. But it's maybe not for people who are looking to pick up the game and play. It's maybe meant for people who are more into sim racing, people who are meant with futzing around with car setups and, and are willing to deal with a car that doesn't handle what they're expecting, I guess. But again, having... I do want to bring in some positives here. I really do. Um, it, they're just kind of hard to see through a lot of the stuff that does need to be fixed. Again, I'm glad it's a demo. Because, yeah, it just... The rendering distance is not great. Like I said before, the audio is not great. The physics, they're good. I've, I've played other racing games that have handled worse, but this does probably need a little bit of ways to go before it's release ready, per se. Uh, track limits and that kind of stuff here. I like that system there, where you hit a cone there, your track lap is, uh, your lap is invalidated, and that, like, your car immediately slows down by taking a penalty and whatnot. Like, that's cool. Again, having a manual transmission, too, as well, is really nice. I'll do a couple of crashes here to see, show you guys how it looks. So, again, rear bumper's off. Can't really see a front bumper hole. Mod. Another thing I noticed too is that the joystick camera or whatnot is kind of odd. It really decreases the frame rate and it's not. I, I wish I could show you how it's looking, but it's like it goes to about here and then it starts turning back and doesn't do like a full 360. And I'll see if I can repeat what I had earlier. So it was like 10 AI, time of day was night or night, kind of dusk. And when I played this earlier, I had an issue where, off the line, the AI just didn't start. Again, another bug that can be patched. That's fine. Um, but as you're noticing at this point, you know, we've seen the game in development for at least a year or two now on TikTok. And... With the July 2022 release date, I'm either hoping that this this poor developer is has got some bug fixes in the work, 
or if not, it's going to have to be pushed back. It's kind of in a rough place as we as we see it right now. So as you can hear, a Formula One car sound like um, semi trucks off the line, I guess, and the low RPMs. And again, AI, they're they're not there. And this car too is kind of hard to handle too because you put any any throttle down and you just lose the rear end there. So definitely not for not for the average. Uh, kind of casual player. You gotta be a little bit more aware of your throttle and your braking and what gear you're in. Of course, you can turn off the manual transmission to, uh, to automatic, um, transmission. As you can tell here, yeah, it's just absolutely zero control over that. And one of the other things, too, is because this car is slightly higher revving into sound design and then lower, really low sounding, again, kind of almost like a semi-truck in the lower revs. Um, where does the track even go here? Oh, that's right. Uh, with, with the backfires, too, uh, it kind of sounds like a pig oinking the lawn, if you know what I mean kind of takes you out of it thinking of that you're driving a Formula One car and it drives like a pig and sounds like a pig <laughs> and that there uh, it looks like they've done a great job with the physics honestly but like the explosion of tires it's like huh I like how they bounce around with you. That's that's really fun. But then we've got these guys here, which you know what I'm going to do at this point. Why is the camera doing that? It's so that's so odd. I'm like not. I was just trying to look behind me, and it's automatically rotating behind. It's kind of odd. So, that was my uh, little bit of kind of more or less a first impression of Race Leak. Maybe not necessarily a, a great review of it as I was just trying to get into, you know, view what all the different uh, kind of options there were in the game. You know, the different things to play as um, in its current state. It is definitely not a game to pick up and play i think it's you're gonna need a lot of time to sit down to really understand the game to understand the physics of how the cars work and uh you know getting used to the track builder really putting in a lot of time to understand it you can't just kind of drop in and just place down track pieces and and call it a day it's something that you really need to put some time into it but that again that again too you know i you guys probably watching like wow this guy either is a complete idiot who doesn't know how to run this game or are kind of in agreement like this is kind of in a rough patch a rough spot you know two months before release yikes and i don't want to give it a scathing review like i don't because for the indie developer that is out there that may be watching this you know you've put in a massive amount of work on this game and i don't want to say it's a bad game because it's not it's it's got that potential to be something great again that rack fist sim racing arcade racing kind of trifecta with a track builder how many track building games are there out there there's just i mean yeah you've got like forza but in like a sim racing space like you would have to go into like a set of corza where you have to do modding and like you have to know what you're doing to like a level of detail that only a programmer would understand so having a really small indie game that has a track builder is really cool. Like, I love that. I mean, graphics again, I mean, it's there. Yes, I think I'm just used to seeing AAA title graphics or, or just this higher level of polish, having these insane render distances in the whole nine. 
but I think it's acceptable. You know, if if this game is to be released in like the five to ten dollar price range, perfect. If you're asking for anything more, there's gotta be a lot more polish than there is right now. Again, audio needs a big amount of work. It really does a huge amount of work. So hopefully, I'm gonna be honest, please delay this. Because if you delay it, then it gives you more time to work on it. You know, I know that you've already probably worked on it for more than two years easy. Um, but I don't want you to face that backlash of the community who is unrelenting, who is relentless and is does not hold back and will pick up the game and say, oh, this is shit and tell you that you're a shit developer and to go yourself or something. No, none of that. It's just, it's not a shit game. It's a really good game. There's. It's not a good game currently, but it's got the potential to be something. So please keep developing this. Please keep working on it. Um, continue making patches for it. Continue doing those bug fit fixes. I really hope that you're going to continue working on this game after release, because if you're going to release it as is, basically, and say, well, I've got something else that I'm working on, I I would be so sad because this is this game has so much more that it can live up to. So that being said, uh, thanks so much for uh, watching my uh, initial impressions of uh, Race League. Um, when the game finally does release, I do want to give it a second look. I really do, because I think in the next couple of months, I think there can be a lot changed. And I think that a lot will change between this work in progress demo and the actual maybe not final release, but the official release per se. So again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, engage in conversations down below. Give me your thoughts on what you like, what you dislike. I'd love to hear it all. Um, so yeah, again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.